Our study this morning is going to be on the book of Revelation. And today we are going to deal with chapter 8, whereby we are going to deal with the seven trumpets. Seven trumpets. These seven trumpets, we are going to deal with it one by one, starting from the first trumpet to the last one, to the seventh. In this chapter, we are going to see, as I told you, when we are dealing with the seals, we have the seven seals. We have dealt with the first seal, the second seal, the third seal, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth seal. And even now, we are going to do the seventh. If you come to the seven, you will find that having dealt with the last six seals, now John is being is going to be shown another file is going to be opened. Because seven here now means the completeness of the first the first six, whereby the seven here is going to comprise all the first six, the first six seals, but now it is going to be opened in another version. Because here, John is going to be shown the detail of this New Testament church. Remember, we saw that the sixth seal was the judgment of the church. All the six seals were opened and John was shown what will take place from the first seals. All of them, they were opened and we have opened them. And we have, we have seen uh, the last, which is the sixth, and we saw it represented the judgment of the New Testament church. So, after having done that, the seven here now is going to be the detail of this New Testament church. Why will it reach unto this point of, of it being, uh, as we saw, or of it being judged in the sixth. What will bring, what, will, what happens before it reaches there? What happens before it reaches there? Plus, if, if the church had gone in the way of the first horse, the white horse, that was the apostolic church, as we are going to see. But then we saw that there came three horses. That means adulteration of the word of God. So all this adulteration or, uh, how can we put it? The word of God was preached not in accordance with the will of God. That's why now in chapter 7, sorry, in chapter 8, we are going to see the seventh trumpet, meaning we are going to see, John is going to be shown what happened, what went wrong with the church of God from the time of the apostles. Now we are going to see the, de the details. Because in the first seals, up to six, we are only shown that the church has changed from the white to the red horse, black, and then pale. But the detail how it came to that point, we don't, we don't know. So in the seven now, John is going now to show exactly what happened or what happens to a church so that it can reach that point. Because surely he was shown that that church, there is going to come a time, it will be judged. It will be judged. So what causes that? 
And that's where we are going to see the seven trumpets. This is different from what it has been taught in church history. And sometimes if you go to church history, you'll find that there are many who have taught it as if it is happening to this feasible world. All this trumpet, they, they put it as if it is the war. A trumpet truly represented the war in the Old Testament. So there are some who have transferred that to the New Testament and they have put this war that it is the war which was fought in Europe after the church came in. How the church and how, uh, how that war in the West, in the Europe, in European countries, all these things, they, they put it as if this trumpet were depicting that time of the church. Well, there's some relationship with some of these things because everything which is in an external comes from the inter internal. Internal is what is revealed by the external. But without understanding the internal, you cannot understand the, exter the external. That's what people don't know. So here we are going to look at the internal of things. Because all what has happened physically in this world is a, as a result of what has happened internally. And as I told you, a church is the soul of, all, of the world, of all nations. So in order to understand the body, you must understand the soul, the soul. So we are going to start from verse 1, where it says, that's chapter 8. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of an hour. Verse 2. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God. And to them were given seven trumpets. Verse 3, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Kiswahili? Hata alipo fungua muhuri ya saba, kukawa kimia mbinguni, Kama muda wa nusu saa. Na menika waona wale maraika saba wasimama ombele za mungu. Na wakapewa baragumu saba. Na maraika mwingine akaja akasimama mbele ya madhabau mwenye cheteso cha dhahabu. Akapewa uvumba mwingi ili auchie pamoja na maombi ya watakatifu wote juu ya madhabau ya dhahabu. Yes. So here, let us see what all this means. The book of Revelation, it is not a simple book. It needs seriously to study and to understand through the mercy of God not through our own knowledge, because when you bring your natural knowledge in the book of, of Revelation, there's nothing. It cannot make sense unto you. These things, they are internal. They are revealed only by the Spirit of God. And God willing, we are going to understand them. So here, when he had opened the seventh seal, this means the exploration of the Lord of the state of the church. This is the Lord now who is going to explore the church, the state of the New Testament church. Because this is a church of God and the church of God is formed 
from God himself. It represents God. And when it represents God, God is divine love and divine truth married together. There is nothing else that a church is supposed to be composed of. It is divine truth and divine love. That one, they marry together because God is that. And that's why you see, in the church of God, there is nothing that we learn here than the truth. And that's why Christ came, when Christ came, he says he came with grace and truth. Because he came with grace and truth. That means it is to reveal the truth of God. Because Christ is the truth itself. And then he said, a new love have I given you. So he came with another love. Not what we, we, we think of love in this world. Remember even before Christ came, Men had their, their, they had what they call love. But Christ came with another love, different from what people think it is love. With the truth about God. And the only thing that can give us life is combination of these two. The love of God and the divine truth, truth. So here, when he says, that when you opened the seventh seal, this is the exploration of the Lord and the state of the church. Then he says, there was silence in heaven as of, as, as of half an hour. So here, this means, this silence here, it means when the church of Christ uh, was formed during the times of the apostles, truly it reflected the kingdom of God. That's what we, why we call it the apostolic church. But now, John is being shown. With his seventh seal, he's going to be shown. You know, here, half an hour here, don't just take it that it means time. Half an hour here means that all things, everything has changed. Those are deeper, deeper things I'll be telling you as we go on. So when this seal was opened, there was silence. That means the church has changed. It has come to something else. Eh? else. So here we are going to deal with a church which has changed. Because remember all what the apostles stood for is going to change changed completely to something very different as we are going to see. That's why there, were, there was silence in heaven. Yes. That's why there was silence. That which was heaven, there was silence now. It is something different which has cropped up. Sasa, Verona. Alafu nasema and I saw the seven angels who stood before God. I just want first of all to understand so that you, you may see where we are heading to. And I saw the seven angels who stood before God. This means the entire spiritual heaven in the Lord's presence. These seven angels here is going to represent, as we are going to see, because these seven angels are the ones which are going to... to any, any, uh, uh, to have these seven trumpet, these represent, as we are going to see, the state now 
of this church which has come up from them we are going to learn again about this church we are going to see how doctrines have been changing throughout the church history because each angel each trumpet is going to have a certain meaning it's going to teach us something about this church which has cropped up you see now and though it has cropped up it has come up you can see that these seven angels stand before who before god before god, before god. that means the church even though it has lost something but still it is a church of who it's a church of god we can see from church history since the apostolic time this church has been there and God has been with that church and as we saw even when this, this, this red horse black horse even the pale horse Bado, it is called the church of who? the church of God so why was it the church of God still? because we are going to see that there are many things which happens to a church through doctrines Sasawa. So these seven angels represent entire spiritual heaven in the presence of God. When we say spiritual heaven before the, before the presence of God is when you come to the church of God, as we are going to see, it has two classes. There are those who are uh, have that inner understanding of the word of God. We call it the celestial love. They have that love of God with them. Who are very few. But when you come to the external church, the external church is called spiritual. Spiritual church. Which is of a lower nature than that celestial love of God. For those who, uh, as we are going to see, as we go on. So, this spiritual church, why is it called spiritual church? It is this physical church whereby it is guided by the truth, it follows only the truths of faith. It follows only the truths of faith. Because in every church, there is that truth which we believe or we take it as our faith, our faith. Now that truth is the one which guides us. And we start with that. So as so long as we start with that truth, we are called that we are a spiritual church. Because we believe with a certain doctrine, a certain truth, our faith is based on a certain truth. But it can be based on that truth and yet it lacks the love of who? The love of God, as we are going to see. So this church that here we can see, this church that here we can see, it is a church whereby uh, it has lost that love of God because the kingdom of God is comprised of the divine love and the divine truth. It has lost the, the divine love. It has left, is left only with the faith. With the faith. Everything that is in that church is going to be based in, on faith. Faith of what they believe is the truth. There's something I want us to see before we go on because that one is maybe it's hard to understand. And there were given unto them seven trumpets. Let us see. This means they were given unto them, these seven angels were, were given unto them seven trumpets. This is a disclosure of the state of the church and the life of those who are in faith alone. Because remember, this church, after their four apostles, is going to be based on faith alone. And that's why you shall hear many of the doctrines that, that, that we, talk, we talk about the, the, the church of God is justification by faith. What about love? We don't talk about that love. 
So it's a church which is of faith alone. It has a doctrine, a belief, but then when you come to love, it is no longer there as we are going to see why. As we are going to see. So here, you will see and verse 3 says, here I'm just trying to thrash it to get you understand. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. This is Christ. Who is going to keep this church? It, it is Christ. That's why you see another angel comes. Now, he has come uh, and stood at the altar having a golden censer. That is, Christ is going to come in uh, to, yani, to protect. To protect. And that's why he said, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the, uh, yani, upon the golden altar. So, this church, though it has lost, it has become a silence, it has lost that uh, active power of the apostle is going to be a church, but Christ himself is going to stand for this church to help, though it has lost its power, as we are going to see. That's where you see he has come with a censor. We are going to see all these censor, the altar, so that we may understand them and see how, how it works. And he says, and the smoke of the incense went up with the prayers of the saint out of the angels had before God. That means the protection of God. So we are going to see, though we are church and we have lost direction, we have lost the love of God, we are only left with just faith, then we have Christ, our prayer. Christ is the one who protects that church. Though it has lost its power, its power. So all these, these are things that we are going to see them in detail as we go on. I'm just trying to give you... Kwenjengine, mm. hii kanisa inaito kanisa kwa sababu kristo anaishikiria. Yes. Kama siyo kristo, ingekui mefanya nini? Imeachwa. Imeachwa, imeenda. Kwa ime, e, kitu ya kwanza imetoka katika misingi ya ukweli. Ya ukweli imeenda. Lakini kwa sababu Kristo anaishikiria kwa kusudi fulani ndio maana inaitwa kani? Inaitwa kanisa. Na ndio naona yeye is another angel. Out of these seven ametokea another eh? Another angel. Because these seven ni wenye wako katika hii kanisa ambaye ni ni waalimu watu wenye wanafanya kazi pale. Na ndio watapata hizi trumpet. This trumpet utakuja kuona they are the gospel which are going to be preached yes. Lakini hata zikipreachiwa bado zime zimepunguki siko na kasoro siko na kasoro lakini Christ mwenyewe atasimama katikati asaidie because among this trumpet kuna wale saints wako pale ndani ambaye their prayer nasikia pale the censor their prayer zinafanya nini through Christ Jesus zinafanya nini zinakubali zinakubalika Hivyo ndivyo sasa yani natakiwa muelewe. Kwa sababu utusipoelewa hivyo hii trumpet itakuwa ngumu sana kuzielewa. Manake watu ndio unaona in church history wametapa tapa they have looked at the formation of this worldly kingdom not understanding that here John is being shown deeper things of the truth of the church itself. The doctrines of the church. Well, it reflects outwardly but if you don't get this in a meaning, it is very hard. So before we go on, there's one thing I want you to understand, as I've told you, because if you don't get this, it will be hard to understand that in the kingdom of God, there are two kingdoms. Uh, there are two kingdoms into which the universal heaven is distinguished. That is the kingdom of love and the spiritual kingdom. And when we say the kingdom of love and the spiritual kingdom, it is whereby the spiritual kingdom, sorry, the, uh, the kingdom of love or the celestial kingdom 
represent a kingdom whereby the love which operates there, it is the love of Christ per se. It is the love of God. But when you come to the spiritual kingdom, the love which operates there, it is the love of the neighbor. You believe that you love somebody because you love your neighbor. Yeah. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. So this spiritual kingdom drive on that love that we should love our neighbor. Our neighbor. But then, does it mean that if you love your neighbor, you love Christ. No. That is it. That is it. So, the church has that doctrine. It is a spiritual kingdom of God, but it is, it is based on this love, love of neighbor but not the love of God. Because this love of God, it means, it, it, is, it, it is driven by perception that where were that love, you have that love in you. You don't just love your neighbor because No. It is deeper than that. That means you have that love of God in you. That's what we call the God's kingdom. The, the God's celestial kingdom. Whereby you have that instinct, that love of God. Whereby it is not the love. This love, we can get it in uh, Ezekiel Corinthians 11, where Paul says, love of, and where he defined the love of God. Let us see it, maybe so that we can understand. So it is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have no charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cyber. And though I have gift of prophecy and, and, and understand all my studies and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. You know, people have never understood what Paul here was saying. That you can have faith, you can even love your neighbor, but when you come to this charity, this charity, you don't have it. So, what am I driving at? What I want you to see is that when we talk of this church, that here John is being shown, whereby there was silence in heaven, meaning it had lost its pure meaning, it means this church, it is a spiritual church, because you can see, even Paul is saying, you, you, even if you have the gift of prophecy, meaning all these things can be in that church. All these things can be in that church. You can have everything of this truth in the church. You can do many things. Even when he says, if you go to verse 3, he says, And though I bestow all my good to feed the poor, isn't that not the love of your neighbor? It's the love of your neighbor. It's the love of your neighbor. It's the love of your neighbor. Ufikiri sasa wewe ukifikiria sasa kupatiana ndiyo nini? When you think that when you are giving, sasa umepatiana, sasa wewe uko sawa, unapenda mungu, badu poro na kumbia, it is not? It is nothing. Without what? Without charity. Charity, by God, your grace, I will come and teach you the true charity, what it means. That is the love of God. So when we say that the church of God is of two character of two kingdom we have the that church whereby the, that charity that love of god is the rule of our life when you, then we have 
another kingdom of God whereby, and this one is one which called the spiritual kingdom, that's whereby we have a faith and we belong to church and our love, we base our love on our, na- our neighbor. Yani tunayelewa hiyo? Umeshika? Eh? That's kuna hilo unaweza kuwa wewe unasema ati you love you love yote unaipeleka tu a neighbor. Ni sawa. Hii ni church. Lakini hiyo love ndio uko naye. Na hiyo ni mzuri. Kwa sababu gani? Is that that one we call it in a higher sense I, yani you are following what we call the faith of love so, so, sorry the truth of faith these truths of faith are in the church lazimewekwa and they guide you to that faith lakini sasa ikiwa utasimamia hapo bado utafanya nini utakamilika haujafika kuna another step sasa hapa ndio tunataka tuone hii kanisa ambaye this trumpet tunaoneshwa sasa hapa ndio tunataka tufunuliwe this way we are going to be shown exactly but, yani, this trumpet tunaoneshwa what made what went wrong with the church it lost the inner kingdom of god whereby this inner kingdom is the kingdom of, of love of charity then it was left with the outer the spiritual kingdom whereby this one is based on the truth of faith whereby our love is based on the love of the neighbor na hapa sasa tunasikia naye paul aliambia wale in the in the first church the early church akwambia hapana mukisimamia pale haku hakuna so you say my charity you see now here he is defining the charity charity suffers long and is kind charity envies not charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up so here we are being shown about this this charity but you'll find that when you come to the church yani it changed completely from this Our church is driven with the envy. Si ni kweli? Unaona watu wako kwa kanisa lakini bado jirasi siko. Envy, unataka ku yaani una envy somebody kwa sababu amekuwa hivi na yeye anafanya nini? Sasa unakuta we lost that charity. Charity was lost in the church. Then something new came in place. That's why you see when he, he opened the seven seal where he is going to to teach us how church came into darkness there was silence in heaven that means that church of heaven it was no longer there chasawa it was something different in the same way we have these two kingdom of and in kingdom of god the that kingdom of charity or celestial love and the spiritual kingdom being two different also in hell they are divided that kingdom of hell is divided into what into two there is that diabolical kingdom of hell and that one is of those who have the love of ruling from love of self yao he ambaye tunaita hell there is that we call uh, the kingdom the satanic kingdom and the the devil kingdom so you come to the one apart so the devil kingdom is the one which is called diabolical kingdom and this one consists of them that are in love of ruling ruling from love of self they yani because of the love of self they like to rule in foolishness You know that man that means this is somebody because of the, yeah, because of the love of self he want to rule through that love of self in foolishness that one belong to the diabolical kingdom of hell and that is on the side of the devil but 
there's others uh, who want to rule from the pride of their own intelligence. This is what we call insanity. That is a satanic kingdom. They have intelligence. They want to rule through intelligence. That one we say it, rep it represents the kingdom of Satan. So even on the side of hell, there are two. Just the same way we have them in the kingdom of God. If you get those two differences, it is going to help us when we are going to deal with these seven trumpets because they are going to be based on this. These two kingdoms of God, the kingdom of charity, love of charity, and the, the spiritual kingdom which is based on the truth of faith whereby the love there which is, uh, which is the love in that church is the love of the neighbor. Sasawa. Haya, things are hard, but I know you are going to get it. Yeah. Yes. The white horse. Wakaendelea, wakati the black horse ameingia, sasa hapo ndio spiritual world. Kingdom. Spiritual kingdom imeingia. Sasa ambayo ni upendo penda jirani ya penda jirani yako. Lakini ule upendo wa charity hau hauko. Ukaisha. That's why you'll find that the church today, since that time, you'll find that the covetousness, it is in the church. Pride, anything that you can think of, it is in the church. And yet, it says it is a church of God. Anything that you can think of entered into the church. So it became something different. different. But it is very hard to tell the people, to, people to understand. It becomes very hard to understand because these, some of these details, it is, they are known by very few. The elect of God, they are the only one who knows. But when you come to the, to the other people, even the, those who have taken charge to be preachers, they don't understand them. How can they understand them? And yet, these are, yani, we call it understanding the scripture the letter through spiritual se sense, the inner, the internal sense of the, of, the, of, the, of the scripture. You know, when you, when you read things outwardly, when you understand, you understand them inwardly, it is very different from what people think. I think from that point, we are going to see to open the first seal now because it is going to, we are going to see these things as I've given you the introduction of these two kingdoms, what has happened in this church. So, and when he opened the seventh seal, I repeat from there, because now we are starting. In the first one, I was just giving you a summary of what you are going to learn in the whole chapter. And when he opened the seventh seal, this we saw, it is the exploration by the Lord of the state of the church and hence of the life of those who are in his spiritual kingdom. How they, are, how they that are in charity and its faith, faith here, those who are in faith alone. So, so here, I want you to get it. That here we are going to, Christ here is opening up his spiritual kingdom. And we saw these spiritual kingdom are they who are in charity and its faith. Which, which means, here, I repeat again, here we are, Christ is opening the spiritual kingdom. Because the other kingdom the celestial kingdom was lost when the white horse was lost. 
So this spiritual kingdom here is also going to deal with the charity of faith, which, is, which comes from faith. And this charity which comes from faith, we have seen, it is that charity of loving your name. Which is, we can say, still, it is charity. In a way, it is charity. Because Babu, imesaidia sana katika church history. Wakati watu wamejua, tunatakio kupendana. And people, they do a lot through that. We have seen it. Sasao. And there was silence in heaven. As of half, half an hour, I have told you. That one, I'm not going to repeat. And I saw the seven angels who stood before God. That one, I have told you. I'm not going to repeat. And there were given unto them seven trumpets. These seven trumpets mean the disclosure of the state of the church. Sasawa. These seven trumpets means the disclosure of the state of the church and of the life of those who are in this spiritual kingdom of God. That is, those who have the truths of faith. Truths of faith. Those who believe in the kingdom of God through truths of faith. That is very important because we don't get that. We wouldn't understand it. Truth. That's here, truths of faith. Meaning, we have doctrines. This is a church whereby it has lost that love because that love, which is celestial, that is that love of God, or that charity, as we have seen it in chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that charity was lost. But now, we are left, that, that, that church was left as a spiritual kingdom of God, which is only based on truths of faith. But though it has lost that charity, but it has truths which make them, or which give them faith. They believe on those truths. Kuna ukweli ambayo wanafanya nini? Hapo wakati mwanangu tunasema truths. Eh sio truth. Sio truth, truths. Kwa sababu tukisema truths ni kumaanisha tu kweli twingi ambao watu wanafanya nini? Wanaamini. Thank you. Sio ile ukweli moja. I'm not saying truth of faith. Ni truths of faith hawa wametoka wametoka katika ule ukweli ambao unastahili wameingia katika ukweli tu ukweli twingi ambazo wanashikilia kama imani ndio imani ya na hiyo ukweli ndio wana base imani ya imani yao kwa hivyo imani yao inatokana na huu tu ukweli truths ambaye kwa kweli ukienda utakuja kuona all these truths they are based on the scripture the letter of the scripture. Na sasa hii doctrines ndio wame inakuwa their foundation ya imani yao. Na hii kana kwamba wanaleta hii charity wanaiweka lakini hii charity sio ile charity ambayo hiyo ni ya ukweli. Ni ya ukweli. Ni ni charity ambayo ya ilikuwa ya It is a charity based on external understanding of these truths. Is is it doctrine of Bible ambayo wameweka ambaye inasema wakisoma the, the scripture inasema love your neighbor na wanasema biblia inasema lazima tupenda tupendane si nao kwa hivyo who upendo who upendo ambaye inasema tupendane it is not from internal ni wa nje it is external kwa sababu it is guided and controlled by the truths these truths of faith ambaye imekuwa the, it is their doctrine ambao wanafanya nini wanaami wanaamini Tunaelewana <laughs> So here you if you understand that 
that here, this church, the seven trumpet of this chapter eight church, whereby, whereby these seven trumpets, you are going to see them one by one, you will see it is this spiritual church which has come instead of that true church, the church of the apostles, who are going to, to be called a, church, a spiritual kingdom of Christ because they are basing their, uh, their, uh, their understanding through the, uh, the scripture, the letter of the scripture. And they are going even to, to do many things which are good things. But when it comes to the internal, that internal nature, they are not worried about it. Nobody cares about it. Nobody wants even to be changed. People are not born again. They just want to be members of that feasible church. That is, okay. that is enough. So when we come to now, to which verse? When we come to verse 2, the last part of it says, and there were given unto them seven trumpets. And I've said it is exploration and disclosure of the state of the church. And hence, the life of those who are in this faith. So, by trumpet is signified uh, by sounding, as by the sounding. The sounding here is the sound that with them. And by sounding, trumpet is signified to call together upon solemn occasions which were various. So, these are trumpets, the seven trumpets are going to teach, that, to teach us the seven different occasions of this church, of this spiritual church. You remember we dealt with chapter 4 with the seven churches. No, was it seven? Yeah, the seven churches. Now here, we just talked about the seven churches. And we saw something about these seven churches, the state of the church. Now here we are going to see those details again. We are going to see them now in details again than what we saw before. Because by that time, he was just giving a what? A summary. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it was introduction of this church, of the New Testament church. Remember, the book of Revelation is dealing with nothing else. It is only trying to teach us about this New Testament church. So if you add any other things about wars of this world, then we miss the point. Unless we understand them from the inner truth of this church. So here, this seven uh, trumpet is to explore and disclose the quality of those who are in, in this faith. And the quality of those who are of the church, both after the apostles in the dark ages and even after the formation. Yeah. Because even after the formation, battle these seven trumpets, and I include wow, because we shall see them in these seven trumpets. They reformed the church, then after the formation, they shall still go back to where, to where they started. That's why we even now, we have the church which reformed the, uh, reformed the, the, the old church of Catholic, but you find that now they have become the same things again. Sasao. Kwa hivu, anagawa kutuambe ya kwamba, tutuwe fikira zetu ya kwamba, hii baragumu, siyo ni kitu inapigwa. Apana. Ni kutuonyesha, Vile hii maizi maizi kanisa vile inaenda. That is it. Vile kanisa inafanya nini? Inaenda. Inaenda, yeah. imetoka katika ukweli, imeenda katika state ingine. Yes. State ingine. Yeah. State ingine. That is it. Kwa hivyo zotoe ya mafikira. Ti trumpet ya tinikitu ya tinutakunja kusikia. Uwikiria. Hakuna. Because that's the mistake people make. They think that trumpet, they are something that they'll come to hear. But this are sound, this, this trumpet is whereby the word of God is being sounded in the way that to alert those who goes, who are of the church, who can understand. Why do I say that? There are many people in this world 
who are very ignorant of the truth. They don't care. So how do they, do you think they are going to understand? This word is not for them. They are so ignorant. They don't even, even to, leave alone the, 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 the internal sense of the scripture. Even external sense, they are not interested. It is, it is not for those. It is for those who follow the word of God into it verity. So, verse 3 says, if you go to verse 3, it says, and another angel came, we have seen now, these are the seven trumpets that they are going to be sounded. That means, in this spiritual church, we are going to have a different way of revealing the truth of this spiritual kingdom of God. And this spiritual kingdom of God, we have seen, it, is, it has not that understanding of the word of God. So what is going to happen with these seven angels, which represent these explorations of those who are in this kingdom? So when you come to verse 3, it says, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. You see now, here we need to understand because this is another point that it, it is very important. So, and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. This one uh, represent another angel. This another angel are those who truly have one thing, it is Christ, Christ himself. And those, Christ himself, and those who have or those who are like Christ himself, they are like Christ, they are like Christ. That means in this church, though we are going to have the spiritual kingdom, that is this church after the apostles, then here we have the seven angels which have the trumpet, which means this trumpet here it is all what is going to go on in this church. And these seven trumpets are the doctrines or the teaching of that church throughout church history. But we have another angel. We have another angel here. That angel is Christ. And those who are like who? Like Christ. Like Christ. Let us understand that. That is it. Uh, by the altar, let us see, by the altar at which the angel stood, and by the golden censer which he had in his hand, the worship of the Lord from spiritual love is signified, which worship is from good of charity by truths of faith. That means, here, how am I uh, represented with Christ, it is here represented the good of charity and at the same time the truth of faith. Meaning, the good of charity, that true charity, 
Sile imekorogwa kile. Sile imekorogwa bado hii iko. So this altar it is altar here represent who? Christ. Christ. Christ is the true altar. True altar. And again yeyote ambaye ni mwana wa Mungu yeyote ambaye amezaliwa katika Kristo Yesu pia yeye is a no he has an altar because you are a priest meaning we are priests kama our high priest meaning we can go through that our high priest priest we can go before who before god tunaweza kwenda bila nani kujipeleka mbele ya Mwenyezi Mungu na ndio tunaambiwa wewe ukiwa mwana wa Mungu don't think that somebody else can pray better for you than yourself kama vile unaona watu wanakimbia tu waobewe na mtu fulani unaenda kuombea na mtu gani if you believe that you are a child of god you are a priest wewe ni nani wewe ni kuhani but yourself wewe ni kuhani ni you can you, you can do atonement wewe mwenye at your own self unaweza kufanya atonement ni kumaanisha wewe mwenyewe unaweza kujiunganisha umeunganika nani na na Mungu kwa sababu you are a priest sasa sawa na diposa hapa anasema uki, 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 tukirudi pale nyuma kidogo anasema and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints Laskia, prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne kwa hivyo nikumaanisha hapa kuna the prayer ambaye kwa kweli ni za nani ni za wateule na huyu ambaye akona golden sesa ana anafanya nini anafanya hizi prayer together na yeye asifanye nini sifike si, 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 kwa hivyo nani wanaweka this spiritual church ambaye imepotoka ni wateule. Na ndio maana hapo unaona Christ baada anafanya nini? Eh? Anashikilia hii kanisa. Yes. Kwa sababu ya wate. Ya wateule. Maana yake wao yeye mwenyewe eh? ameona hii kanisa hakuna sio kanisa eh? imeenda. Eh? Lakini kwa sababu ya wale ambao ni wateule wapo hapo ndio maana anaishikilia. Ndio maana anaishikilia. That means the prayer of these saints ndizo zinafanya itwe hii kanisa itwe kani? Na wale watu wanafanya hii izikike hii kanisa ikubalike ni kanisa la Mungu it is this prayer of the saints of the saints kwa sababu wengi ambao wako kwa kanisa they are not saints sio elect ni watu ambao wameenda pale kwa sababu wameshika the doctrines peke yake wameshika the truth of faith wanaamini hiyo externally which means hata maombi yao kwa sababu ni ya mwili haiwezi fanya nini haiwezi yenda mahali kwa hivyo wale wanaweka hii kanisa ni nani? Ni wateu? Ni kwa sababu Christ Jesus the true altar ako wapi? Ako pale. Let us see some points about the altar. Ndio tuelewe vile anamaanisha. If you go to the Old Testament that is to the tabernacle. There was there was the holy place and the most and the most holy the the most holy holy of holies and the holy place sasawa and there was a veil here and here was a veil na hapa nje at the gate there was an altar and when you come to here at the second veil there was also another altar this altar was called the golden altar and this one was called the altar of ba bani tunaona mpaka pale so there were two altars with the children of israel the one was without the tent that is here sasawa the other within the tent so the altar without the tent was called the altar of burning 
offering. That one we know. Nimeonyesha. Because burnt offering and sacrifices were offered upon it. The altar within the tent was called the altar of incense and also the golden altar. So the reason of there being two altars was that the worship of God is from celestial love and from spiritual love. That is, what is celestial? That is the, the love of charity. And the other, the other one was the spiritual love. Which means this one here, the first altar here represented the, the spiritual kingdom. This one here represented the what? The, 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 the celestial love. That is the love of charity. That means if, if you see here when you see this uh, altar here, it was golden altar. But when you come to, the, to this one, it was also an altar. It was Was it golden? No. It was of brass. But it was inje. When you say it was of brass, brass represents... It is that one whereby it is an altar in the represent binadam he has an altar. That's why it is of brass. But when you come to this one, Ambaya Iko Katika in a veil, in a represent golden meaning, it is this is the internal worship whereby this one represent those who are in Christ Jesus. Some of these things, they are there. And that's why you see here, when you come to, when you come to a verse, it says, it says, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. So, he, which means, he is not talking of this altar here, yeah. which is outside. Which means, all the other people, without Christ Jesus, they represent the altar, altar. I altar ya inje. Ndi wanafanya nini? Wana represent. That means, ata waki, waki, waki yoshua, ata wakisema kabisa they belong to the church, the farthest they can go, it is the first compa, the holy place. But they'll never enter here. The most holy. The most holy. Because this is the most holy here. Christ, the high priest, the high priest. You see now? So, when you come to, the, to this holy place, hapa unakuta hapa inje kuna nini? Kuna mkate hapa inje? Kuna kila kitu hapa inje? Arabu watu wanakula? Eh? The seven candles. Ziko hapa inje? That means this one represents the church of God in this worldly ki kingdom. This spiritual kingdom the church of God is being was being represented by this, this is the first compartment even until the, uh, this altar which was the altar of burning. Manake, wala watu wanasema wanaikia kwa kanisa, watu wanasema wafanya nini? Wamezaliwa tena. Na nikusema wameingia katika nani? Katika Kristo Yesu. Wame, wamezaliwa na wameingia katika wokovu na ni watoto wa nani? Watoto wa mungu. Kwa hivu hapa tunataka kufundishwa, yule ambaye, another angel ambaye mekuja hapa ni nani? Ni Christ. Yeye kazi yake ni kuombea hawa. Manake yeye, hii sensor ndiyo ina, inaenda hapa, inafraisha nini? Inafraisha mungu. Na tunasikia kisema hapa na sema. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Having a golden censer. And there was given him unto him much incense. That's prayer. That he should offer it with the prayers of all saints. Upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Because why is the throne? Iko wapi? Iko ha? Kwa hivyo 
the prayer ya wale watoto wa Mungu wako hapa the saints wao sasa sasa wao together with the Christ manaka anasikia kilio chao Christ dio anachukua their prayer to the throne of God that means he is our high priest alafu anatuombea ndio ndio kabisa eh, tukubalike mbele ya Mwenyezi Mungu but hawa wote ambao wameingia katika the first compartment hapa ndio wanaitwa spiritual ni kwa sababu wao wanaamini yani hii neno la Mungu externally wanaamini externally na kwa bisa without Christ Jesus hawezi kubalika na kana kwamba hiyo kanisa inakubalika inakubalika ni kwa sababu ya wateule na nani na Kristo ndio inafanya hiyo kanisa ikubalike na hapa sasa ndio tunasema ukisoma kidogo about this altar so the reason why altars censers and incense were seen by John was not because there was such thing in heaven ahubwa la kitu kama hiyo they were only representative of the worship of the lord there all these that we read in the old testament all these tabernacles that we learn all these altars we don't learn them because they are, these things they are not in heaven the way they are but they, they represent the spiritual things of heaven how they work how they work kwa hivyo tusiangalie tuseme kwa sababu John huyu anasema these things are typically at ziko big na pana these are only representative they signify deeper things because hapa sasa tunafundishwa the golden altar is Jesus Christ himself and is the only one who can make us cross who can make our prayer to be heard by God himself we are we all belong to this in this world we belong to this first compartment having and and having the the altar of burning that means we have accepted Jesus Christ as our lord but we have become the altar of burning that means we are children of god because we have accepted Christ Jesus and all the sacrifices were done here when you say sacrifices it is through this altar which is in us and that's why we say the sacrifice that we call sacrifice they are not sacrifice per se as we see them in the old testament the sacrifice is what we sacrifice ourselves the denial of ourselves those are the sacrifices that we call that here yani they were sacrificed so you can see the altar of burning here is of brass brass represent the the fallen man our body that's why it is a brass and that's why you see Christ is not of brass it is a golden sensor sensor there's a different and yet unaona bado naitwa the altar is an altar bado naitwa is an altar is that so let us read psalms 43 verse 3 and 4 psalms 43 Verse 3 and 4. Soma. Unasema. Niletewe nuru yako na kweli yako. Siniongoze, sinifikishe kwenye mlima wako mtakatifu na hata maskan yako. Hivyo nitakwenda madhabahuni kwa Mungu, kwa Mungu aliye furaha yangu na shangwe yangu. Nitakusifu kwa kinubi Okay. So you can see here he says, "O send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God. Unto God my exceeding joy. Yeah, upon the harp will i praise thee oh god oh my god so you see here you can see the psalmist here is say is talking about thy tabernacle 
Why is this tabernacle of God? And by the, the psalmist tabernacle, it is our heart. Our heart. It is in our heart. This tabernacle by Hapa Utunoleswa, Aiko in Israel, they were being taught of a tabernacle outside themselves. But this tabernacle by Hapa Sami Serasema, Nile Iko Daniake. Yeah, Daniel, yes. Daniel Kila Moja. Rafa Padina Sema, Yani, verse 4. Then will I go unto the altar of God. So where is this altar of God? But we call it Yani. Because, Akuna Parigine to Nada Kutafta Mungu in Jetu, Apana. God is in us. It's only that our ourself ndiyo mefanya mungu asiwe on the throne. Unaona hapa, tunaona, tunaona hapa Christ Jesus anasimama at the second veil with a golden altar. Ambaye with the incense ndiyo tukubalike wapi? At the throne. So, which means all this tabernacle here it is within us. God is within us. But he's not within us if if ourself if we have not accepted Jesus Christ in that nataka hapo muone. In that our altar which is of brass. Kwa sababu yaani sisi kabisa katika nature we have this altar here by ni nature by ni outward by iko outside the tent the altar by tunaita altar hapa bado ni, ni Christ because hata sisi hata bado iko ndani yetu lakini hii altar by iko hapa nje ni kwa sababu haija haija simama katika ukweli isafisho vile natakikana ndio kabisa ikubalike iunganie yani tunganishwe our altar of brass ibadilishwe iwe by Christ iwe the altar of yani the golden altar ndio sasa ikubalike hapa at the throne of god sasa ndio unaona hapa tunasomanga kitu ambaye kama iko nje yetu lakini bado hii mambo yote iko ndani yetu yeah. so this altar the brass iko ndani yetu manake hiyo ina represent sisi wakati tu katika spiritual church tuko kwa kanisa tumekubali so kristo we are an altar na tunaomba na tunaenda tunakula mkate tunafanya kila kitu ambaye inafanywa katika kanisa lakini shida ni kusema by ourselves ikiwa ndio inaongoza this altar of burning kama it remain the altar of burning of ourselves then we shall not see god manake to see god here means you have to be taken by, who, by, by the golden altar. That means golden here and here the golden altar represent the charity of love or the love of charity. And this one, it is where we have seen uh, the charity which is of God whereby it, is, it has nothing to do with this world. But when you come when you come to the to this veil here through the brass uh, the, the altar of burning which we believe that we are in Christ Jesus and we are outward in the church because you can see this altar here where is it outside the tent the tent Eric not to one this altar of burning is outside so this altar of burning when it is outside, it means you are in the church, but you are out and inside, outwardly, you are in the, you are in the church. But inwardly, you are not there. Outwardly, you are not But inwardly, you are not there. Then you ask hapo Sami Zanaria na sema then will I go unto the altar of God because the altar of God here it is this altar hapa the second veil meaning here and this way you can only be taken here by who 
by Christ, by being truly born again, and this altar of burning of, of brass, Ibadilishu, Iwe the golden altar, Uwe na that charity of love. Sasao. Let us read Isaiah 19, 1919. Yeah, in that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of e Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. So here, Isaiah is prophesying of the church, the New Testament church. And Egypt, you remember, represent here the Gentiles. And I said, in that day, there will be an altar of God in the midst of Egypt. That means, in Gentile, Christ Jesus will be there, will be there, because he, he represents the altar. So you can see the altar here, what it means. Sasao. Let us also see the opposite of altar. Hosea 10, 8. Inasema. Mahari pa aveni palipo inuka yaani dhambi ya israeli pataharibi ka muiba na mbigiri itamea juu ya malabao zake na wataiambia mirima tusitirini na virima tu angukieni. That is it. The high places also of Aven, the sin of Israel shall be destroyed. The thorn and the visto shall come up on their altars and they shall say to the mountain, cover us and to the hills of, and to the hill fall on us. What does that mean? It means this altar which is in us, when it become, when it becomes evil, or when the these two, that means the things of this world are the one which are driving. And that's, yeah, it means that altar which is in us, it has become e evil. So the altar is in us. These altars are in, a, in us. And if this altar in us is, is not sanctified to be an altar of God, because we have heard the psalmist is crying to be taught in order to dwell in the altar of who? Of God. Which means the same altar can be evil. Tunelwana. Yeah. What we can do that the moon we inje at it now or whatever is that the yani uh, you'll find that what I want you to see here that the church and by it now get into the spiritual kingdom of God. All what it has done, it, it is worshiping God externally through the altar of brass, external altar. And this altar can be e evil. evil. It is the altar of God because it is the same, same altar where God can do what? He's going to do what? To dwell. But when that altar is not sanctified, God is not going to dwell there. So of course we don't care to naiba, to naibia mungu, we sing for God in the church, to nafanya sijui nini, nasikia zizuri ki muibia mungu. That is all external worship. And it has nothing to do with the altar. The altar bado nini? Nicha? Nichafu. God is not dwelling there. Na iki wachafu, kuna mwenye napenda uo uchafu. Na hindi atadweli hapo. Yeah. Iki wachafu, it is evil. That means the devil is going to, to dwell there. That means the church, when it comes to external worship, ukiangalia, unona iko nini? Iko sa? But when you go to the internal worship, hakuna kitu. That's why unazikia sasa, the seven angel pale, tutakuja kuwadea kusoma, kuziona, tutakuja kuona, hawa wengi wako katika external worship. 
ambaye yule ambaye ameshikilia this external washing for the time being ni nani ni Christ Jesus pamoja na wateu wateule prayers ya wateule wale ambaye ni watoto wa Mungu nikubanisha katika this first compartment in this world hapa kuna watoto wa Mungu hawa watoto wa Mungu together with Christ ambaye ni the golden altar ndio anakubalika katika the throne of God ambaye ndio anakubalika katika anasafisha mpaka hapa unakuta yule ambaye yako hapa anaungana na, 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 na Christ mpaka the, the altar yako inakuwa the golden altar ambaye hata wewe unafanya nini unakuwa one with who with God one with Christ na ndio Christ pale alisema naomba hawa umenipatia wawe wamoja na sisi one with us kama sisi sisi vile tuko nini tuko kitu kimoja so hapa ile ya pili hapa wajana kwa hii ya kwanza manake hii ndio iko na gate na wengi hapa wanaingia katika sababu kila mtu ako na altar pale lakini it is the altar of blood brass hii hapa ndio ina determine manake hapa ndio unaungana na Mungu na Christ na ukiungana na Christ unaungana nani na Mungu na Mungu kwa hivyo your altar which is in you inakuwa the altar of who of God, of Christ or of God so you will find that na hii ndio unaona tunasema kanisa nyingi in this world ile wanaita madhabahu ni nini ni nyumba wanaenda wanatengeneza pahali pale katika stage wanaweka vitabaa mzuri wakiweka vitabaa mzuri ambaye ni za green na whatever hapo ndio wanaita the altar na ni madhabahu na wanasema ni sacred nataka muone sasa vile watu yani kanisa imeingia ime imeingia katika giza ambayo tutakuja kuona with the seven trumpet sasa hii madhabahu ambayo wanasema ni madhabahu wako mbali sana manake hii madhabahu wanasema yani wanaifanya iwe sacred imewafanya wafanye nini wasahau wamemuondokea Mungu wamemuondokea Mungu hata wamesahau the inner madhaba the inner man the inner man ambaye hiyo madhabahu sasa hapo ndio inatakiwa kuwa sacred manake Mungu hadwell pale nje kwa kanisa atupale kwa madhabahu si mjengo hapana sasa nyinyi mnachukua madhabahu ni pale nje sasa shetani anawasungusha anawas, akili. You are fighting for a flaw. Wewe ukitaka mtu akitaka kanisa natengeneza vizuri sana pale ati ni madhabahu. Hata kuna pale labda hata wewe sitakiwe ukanyage pale na viatu ama nini ati ni madhabahu. All these are external wo- worship and they have nothing to do with the internal worship. If you can keep external worship hata ukiweka namna gani wewe you will never see heaven. Hao taiona. Hao taipata. Na ndio naona hapo sasa tunaambiwa nikimalizia katika that, that whatever inasema inasema ukienda pale inasema and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense. What was incense? Maombi. Maombi. Ambaye Eh, he ndio maombi yeah. and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers prayers of the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne kwa hivyo hii maombi ambaye ni incense in a represent the prayers of the saints of the saints. Kwa hivyo nikumaanisha sio at the saint hapa ni mtu yote ati ati sasa ameingia kwa hii kanisa hapana. Hii kanisa remember iko na watu wangapi? Watu wawili. Kuna wale watoto wa mwili ambaye ndio the majority wana represent the outward church. Kuna wale ni watoto wa kiroho ambaye wa, ni, wa, ni wa church wana represent the inner. So when we say the prayer of the saint hapa ni kumaanisha katika hii kanisa hata kana kwamba imeenda katika giza 
kuna wale watoto wa Mungu hao ambao wanaomba katika kweli na wanaomba kwa kweli mpaka maombi yao inaungana na maombi ya nani ya, ya Christ mpaka inakubalika hiyo ndio incense mbanukato mazu mazuri na ndio unaona incense ukienda katika Old Testament ilikuwa inatengenezwa na manukato mazuri sasa and it says at the smoke of the incense went up with the prayers of the saints out of the angel's hand before God nasikia and the smoke of the incense maombi went up with the prayers of the saints out of the angel's hand before God this one means the protection of the lord which means he kanisa atakana kwamba imepotea atakana kwamba imekataa ajia hatakana kwamba mafundisho yengine hayapatani na ukweli wake wa Mungu hatakana kwamba eh, wame, wamepotoka the charity the true charity wamepoteza lakini Christ with the prayer of the saint yani with the prayer of the saint eh singira wanapatia protection that church inakuwa protected by Christ and that's why even the even though since the apostles time the church lost the apostolic some of the apostolic doctrine and power it has been there because it has been protected by Christ himself that's a golden censer the prayer with the prayers of the elect dio kanisa unaona imekaa huo muda wote ikiwa iko na haijamalizwa hebu soma Psalms 141 verse 2 Psalms 141 verse 2 Inasema <coughs> Sara yangu ipae mbele zako kama uvumba kuinuliwa mikono yangu kama dhabiu ya jioni Yes <coughs> Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hand as the evening sacrifice So there I want you to see that he incense in a represent the prayer the prayer and the prayer of the saint through Jesus Christ ndio in a keep the church though the church is fallen or it has gone astray Yes I think let us not go up to verse 4 let us start that, that verse with the next someone is kwa sababu naona ita haitamalizika sasa but if you read verse verse 5 it says and the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth and there were voices and thundering and lightnings and earthquake six And the seven angel which had the seven trumpet prepared themselves to sound. So here you can see and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thundering and lightnings and earthquake. So these voices that means when the prayer when Christ intervened The church was in silence. The church had yani had gone into darkness. But when Christ intervened, then things are going to change. This thundering and lightning, it is nothing else than a revived church whereby the yani uh, things are going to drive in the church because it says and there were voices and thundering and lightnings and the earth quick signify all the communication was open with them there were hard reasonings as to faith alone and confirmation in favor of it and the state of the church with them was perceived to the totaling of destruction which means wakati christ had intervened with the prayers of the saints then the church there was somehow Uh, a reasoning people started think yani studying the word of god again and this one it is going to lead even to the 
to the time of reformation as you are going to see because people Christ is awakening these people remember to me honor after the silence Christ has come with the prayers of the saints the those who are in the church they have made the prayer through Christ and they are heard in heaven then Christ as God wakati anasema and the censer was filled with the incense that means this prayer or the power was given unto those people who were in the church or who were in the church since after the apostolic time and they started reasoning they started yani yeah, forming doctrines they started doing many things about the church and then the church in a way there is a revival which took place because if that horse the black horse or the red horse or these horses were allowed things could have gone wrong so when we hear that there were voices and thunders and lightning and earthquake this is not just uh, lightnings are uh, 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 natural lightning no there are spiritual voices and reasonings which and here it means a lot disputations of doctrines many things that has occurred in church history about the doctrines about uh, faith people argue about faith people argue about many things all these things have come as a result of this prayer of the saint through our lord jesus christ and that's why you see uh, after that when you come to verse 5 it says and the angel took the censer no ni sorry verse 6 and the seventh angel which had the seventh trumpet prepared themselves to sound so from there we shall come and see verse 6 uh, verse 7 the sounding of the first angel sasa po we have been preparing that but we have come now to the end of that preparation even to the point where we are shown how Christ intervened through the prayer of the, of the saint we have seen it then now we shall come and see the sounding of this uh, seven trumpets starting from the first angel sounded and there fell hail and fire mingled with blood we shall see all these things what what they mean in our next study of this chapter amen